In order to graduate, those in my human development undergraduate program are required to have an internship. I got incredibly lucky when I landed my dream internship, working in a middle school math class. <laughs> However, when I tell people how excited I am, I get a lot of strange looks like some of you gave me just a second ago. Taking an unofficial poll, I've realized that most adults are afraid of both middle schoolers and math, so to have them together? In fact, I had a friend, when I gave him the good news, who said this joke. He said, um, if you ever wanted to know what you were most insecure about, you just talk to a seventh grader for a couple minutes and they'd be glad to point it out to you. <laughs> I think the funniest thing about this joke isn't that middle schoolers are mean, but, ac but that there's an actual reasoning behind their lack of social etiquette. I mean, honestly, it makes sense because their combination of delightful awkwardness and their curtness and their lack of uh, social, social education makes them just comically bad at social interactions. Which makes sense because they're at this point in their lives where childhood is a thing of the past and they just started on the long trek through adolescence into adulthood so they're a little inexperienced. Why then do I know adults who are two to three times my age who still can't get along with one another? Let's use middle school and math to find out. So <laughs> not only is, this Im is middle school important because they go through social and emotional and psychological change, but that they go through actual physical cognitive change as well. In a Princeton journal titled Development of Children Ages 6 to 14, the author Jacqueline S. Eccles states that the most important cognitive changes during early adolescence relate to the increasing ability of children to think abstractly, consider the hypothetical as well as the real, and reflect on themselves and on complicated problems. This newfound ability to be analytical makes middle school math all the more fun. Because in the classroom, they're starting to build and to graph and to most importantly, solve. In middle school, math is absolute. There's a right and there's a wrong. In life, not so much. I remember my first year of college gleefully helping anyone in my residence hall who needed it with, with help uh, with their algebra because you get to a point where x equals four and that's it, you move on. And in the classroom, in the middle school classroom, I have students come to me because I'm all of a sudden an authority on life. And they, they ask me things like how to solve for mathematical X and how to deal with their first romantic X's, <laughs> plus things like identity issues and familial issues, uh, essentially the grown-up variables that we don't expect children that young to have, but they do. And I don't always know how to answer their surprisingly deep questions. I'm still in college. I just got my first credit card. I use Google like a third parent, okay? <laughs> Most times I feel like this. <laughs> Still, I wanted to find an actual tangible way to explain adulthood to them in the best way that I could. So I decided to do what, I was, what they were doing in class. I plotted points on a number line. <laughs> so in middle school, um, I identity formation, well, in life in general, all right? Let's say identity formation and adulthood is all about making decisions, right? So you have things like Republican Democrat and Mayo Miracle Whip and sleep or study, okay? <laughs> question after question, decision after decision, binary after binary, spectrum after spectrum, dichotomy after dichotomy. And then the more decisions you make, the more it, it compounds to form the basic formula of who you are. In middle school, with the, with the developmental ages of late 11 to early 14, we find that, and as a uh, developmental psychologist Eric Erickson said, this is called identity versus role confusion, which essentially boils down to, do you fit in or do you stand out? In this case, fitting in would be identifying with the general, and standing out would be identifying with the specific. Our nation is obsessed with this concept, all right? Our constitution starts with we the people. E pluribus unum, that weird Latin phrase that you see on dollar bills, means out of many, one. I've had my university classmates refer to America as a melting pot. But instead of deciding which one America's truly for, being the same or being different, let's just look at the pros and cons of both. 
So being the same is really good if you really like supporting sports teams or for patriotism in more times, right? But it's not so good for things like Nazism and dystopia like in George Orwell's 1984. Being all the different is, being very different is also very good for things like education because exposure to different things helps with creativity. But it's not so good if you identify so specifically that you lose com commonality with other people and become an outcast. I, I'll use an example here. So um, in, cl in middle school, I like to use hypothetical situations because hypothetical situations are new to them. Uh, and they like to empathize. I help them get into the shoes of another person to empathize. All right. So this hypothetical person that we'll use, we'll name him Percy. Okay. Now Percy can identify with the general or the specific. So for example, if he was to identify with one facet of uh, his identity, his personhood, he would just say, I'm a person. However, he could also identify with the specific. Maybe he's Asian. Maybe he's transgender. Maybe he's working class. Maybe he's pansexual. And you can add on until you've got favorite ice cream flavor, shoe size, where he grew up, all these things that identify him. And they have identify us as well. However, the longer the list becomes, the harder it is to find someone exactly like him, right? Whereas if we all just identified as a person, we would all be the same. Here's another, another um, example, non-hypothetical this time. So Raven Simone, who is known for starring in the great TV show That's So Raven, went on the Oprah Winfrey net Network and was asked about her, how she identified with her race and her sexual orientation. She had said on the show that she's not African American, she's just American. And that she didn't want to be labeled as anything other than a human who loves humans. She also called herself a colorless person. This is an example of her identifying with the general instead of the specific. All right? So which is better? Identifying with the general and fitting in or identifying with the specific and standing out? I tell you, I know what X stands for in adulthood. I have the answer. Ready? Be in the middle. I know what some of you are thinking, and yes, it does seem like a little bit of a cop-out to just say, don't pick either side. And I, I kind of agree, especially when American media seems to give so much power to those who are strongly for either side. However, it would also be the much easier decision to just pick one, go through your life not having to think about it ever again, and just keep barreling through life that way instead of struggling and trying hard to reach a middle ground. And I know that we can reach a middle ground because I saw it firsthand in my middle school math class. So let me teach it to you. Number one, calculate your values. So on that number line, you need to know where you stand. You have to ask yourself, do I feel like I'm the same as everyone else or do I feel like I'm different? Knowing where you stand on that line is going to be incredibly helpful because the farther away from the middle you are, the harder it is you're going to have to work to get to the middle. And it also comes in handy when you know other people and you know where they stand on the line as well. So when you enter interactions with them, you can consciously and subconsciously kind of tailor your interaction in order to be harmonious. Speaking of harmony, the second one, simplify. Keep your goal in mind. Kindness to others, respect. We all live on the planet together, so we gotta get along, all right? And last, show your work. When I'm in the middle school math class, I tell my students to work in pencil and not in pen because it's easier for them to identify issues, erase them, adjust, and move forward. Adulthood is the same way, and we should be able to apply that to all of our lives. If I enter into a social interaction that doesn't go so well, then I need to make sure that I am improving upon myself by making note of it and adjusting and then moving forward. Believe it or not, it's a myth that, that you get to a point in adulthood where you stop making mistakes. You would hope that that number would lessen, right? But it's a complete myth that they stop. And where there are mistakes, there is room for improvement. So as we leave middle school and we go on in into the point that we're an older adult, we should be getting a little better at who we are 
every single day. And by the time we have, we've ended our lives, then these mistakes should lessen quite a bit. And we should be good to each other. However, I know that this is kind of hard to remember, especially when you log onto Facebook or you turn on your TV or even when you go to the grocery store and you're going to check out and you stop and you look at the magazine because you want to know what Kim K is up to. And you notice that there are things like people fighting over who's friends with who and people fighting over who's mo the most successful and people fighting over who's the prettiest. Those things all still seem like middle school. But what will we'll di differentiate ourselves from our early, early adolescent selves is what we do from this point forward. How we enter into situations with each other. If we are able to go in knowing that you're gonna be good to the other person and hoping that they're gonna be good back to you, then we as an entire society can elevate our own selves. Okay class, so for homework, I want you to take these three things that I've taught you, calculate your values, simplify, and show your work, and go out into the wor world with agency. Be your own person, and help others be theirs. Most importantly, I want you to take this information into your social interactions with middle schoolers. They're not scary, they're scared. And very soon they'll be scared adults, just like you and me. I know, because I used to be one. <laughs> Good luck and thank you.